Okay, good evening. Happy Thursday, everybody. It's a dive into AI with Meredith. This is week 12. This is our last week. How are y'all doing? I am here with my friend Leticia Austin. She is the Chief Technology Officer at the Mobile Sophisticate. And I'm excited to have her here because tonight we are going to talk about um, creating an AI agency. Hey, Leticia. Hey, Meredith. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for agreeing to come on here. So you know that I've been doing these live streams for this makes week number 12. So this is the last week in the first season. So congrats. thank you. And I invited you to come and help me wrap this up because you have been such an integral um, part of my life for what the last since before was it no it started during COVID because we met in 2020 right yeah so it started during COVID but Leticia has been such an integral part of my life um since maybe like August of COVID (laughs) (laughs) like the year COVID started so it's a little more than three years now so right I just now that I when I verbalized that I realized like how what the time frame is so that's crazy (laughs) Yeah. Quick at the same time, it doesn't feel like three years, right? So, Leticia has a astonishing business mind. <laughs> I would take that compliment. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, I mean day. she could talk business like all day long, and you have been in the tech space. I know it's been more than twenty years. How many years? Um, officially, I think my sister and I count it's like 24. I'm going to buy it on my 25th year. So I've only done tech my entire life since college. That's all I've done. You've only done it your entire life? (laughs) Well, at this point, I'm in my 50s. So I'm almost at the halfway point of my of my life. True. Yes. Your your entire working career. So that is awesome. And you have been um, sustainably Well, not self-employed, but you've been a business owner. Like, you've owned a business, like, most of that career, right? Yep. I started off, uh, well, I started off with a job. I had that job probably about six or seven months. And then an opportunity presented itself to kind of be self-employed. And then over the years, it became into a business. Correct. Yep. Okay. And so you have been, I just realized, I don't think I'm using the right mic. Are you guys having trouble hearing, hearing us? I hope not. I hope my mic is set appropriately. If not, please, somebody drop down in the chat if you're having trouble uh, hearing us. Because as far as I can tell, let me bring up the comments. Okay. Okay. If you guys can hear us well, somebody please give a thumbs up or a chat, a comment in the chat. Um, So, yeah, it's been... You've been in business for a long time. So over these last 12 weeks, I have been showing people. Okay, thank you, Paulette. So I have been showing people how to use like ChatGPT. We've done some mid journey. Um, I've been sharing like, you know, prompts to use and the various scenarios of how you can use um, artificial intelligence. And it's been like I just was working in um, mid journey. You know, you know, very well know that softwares and artificial intelligence especially the interface is like evolve all the time so oh. mid journey for example is going through um an evolution right now where they say that on their roadmap they're planning to build their own website but everything is still in discord right now but they like put a their website into beta test so you can see at the top of it it says um like image generation coming soon but they've changed the mid journey interface and i think we showed that last week and i can pull it up here and share it here while we're talking but um i was looking back in my profile and i first got on mid journey november 7th is a year this week november 7th of 2022 and my first images there were terrible <laughs> <laughs> and i compared the prompt from um what the one i used on november 7th and i reran it in the new um model like the uh, model 5.2 and the stark contrast between what the prompt gave 
November 7th of 22 versus what it gave November 7th of 2023 is like bananas. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so much better it's so much more improved but like artificial intelligence is advancing at such a rapid pace and the reason why I wanted to have you here is I feel like this is a gold rush opportunity in terms of like opportunities like we don't get this many opportunities in our lifetime and I feel like this may be the third one in my lifetime because the first one was when the internet became a thing, like when they turned the internet on, the World Wide Web, I call it America Online. I mean, it probably has different flavors. You may have a different frame of reference. But the internet, to me, was like the first gold rush. What What about you? Like, when did you kind of get knowledge of the internet? So for me, it probably started like a little bit out of college. So when I left college, I left college as a programmer. I worked in the programming space for many years. Um, and at that time, we were building actual solutions using, as you would say, the World Wide Web or the AOL. But at that time, we were building it for Fortune 5000 companies. You weren't building it for the everyday business or the mom and pop shop or anybody. Everything at that time was very, very expensive, too, to do those website bills and the customization. Just from there to now and the rapid pace of now you can use an AI base a uh, model and wrapper and build a website and still you know do business it has definitely definitely changed but that would have been my kind of like first introduction to you know this whole online space in the world wide web yep I agree. okay so that was like would you say that was like the late 90s for me i would say and i can remember exactly where it was and who, I, who or the was early 90s it was early 90s would have been like well for me i didn't first of all i didn't get out of college until the mid 90s but it was like the year two out so i would say like 95 96 for me the internet really um started blowing up i had a client who was an organization um a nonprofit organization and they needed they were going on um the world wide web at that time and we built a website and then we built a like an intranet before there was a sharepoint so they would have resources that they shared because they had offices all over the united states so yeah like 95 96 for me was like that pivotal breaking point okay and we have some people joining us hey liana hey liana hey rakaya hey paulette Thank you for joining us. So, um, so I feel like my frame of reference for when the internet kind of first went live, they were giving out those America Online discs. So it had to be like the you early were- 90s. Yes. Because I was still in high school and you had to like change out the disc if you wanted to talk to somebody on like Instant Messenger. I remember doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and that had to be like the early you were on dial up if you were home your mother was mad because she couldn't use her phone yes and that was like the early 90s but I never learned how to really do anything with it so I would call that like the first gold rush of my lifetime like if I would have known you know what to do with it from like a business perspective I probably I probably could have got rich <laughs> and changed oh, my yeah. tax brackets so the next gold rush I would say is the app stores when the Apple phones and like the Android phones came out with their app stores and people started building apps to, you know, that you could use on the phone as opposed to just using like the web browser. Um, And you could send push notifications to people. To me, that's the next goal rush. And I don't know that we're still in it, but, you know, creating mobile applications is still a thing. But artificial intelligence is absolutely the next goal rush of my lifetime. And so it excites me, I guess, because I'm a nerd. But what I wanted to (laughs) talk, but I just I see this as such an opportunity to change like my life for other people to change their lives in terms of creating income and quality of life. So I want to ask you, like, for people that are learning like AI tools now, like what is the best way for people like what they're learning to try to turn this into a business? Or do you think this is a good opportunity to turn this into a business? Oh, I absolutely think it's a great opportunity to turn it into business. I mean, just recently, Microsoft themselves have launched their own AI component to their Microsoft products. Every company out here, any of the tools you use today, any of the software you use today, they're going to start to add these AI components to it. So let's just look at this. If the bigger companies are doing it, then that definitely means there's a space for a smaller company, smaller businesses 
or even if you start off like I did as an independent, you still can make your mark. You still can have financial freedom uh, with AI. Um, you know, we got the marketers, you got everybody making all these things. So it's going to replace people. I don't necessarily think that it's going to replace people, but I do think that it's going to become a necessary part of the job market. Like you're going to have to know how to use it in some sense or some portion um, for those who are not going to be creators. Like I'm going to be a creator, but we have two client platforms launching in 2024. So we're going to be a creator of some AI products. But I do think it's going to almost be one of those required things on a resume, you know, like when I grew up, my parents like, you got to go to college, you got to have a BS degree. I think they're going to start to look for the line item of your use of understanding of AI and how to do what people would call prompt engineering. I agree. And then there's like a meme going around. It's like jobs are not going to be replaced by AI. Jobs are going to be, or your job is going to be replaced by people that know how to use AI. So it's kind of like I really just one of my goals like with doing these live streams is to impress upon people that AI is here to stay and that I think we all should learn how to use it. And I'm kind of I'm in the Gen X era, so I'm kind of focused on my Gen Xers like I want us to all kind of get, you know, with this program, get get on the train and learn to use AI and figure out you know, how you can use it in your work and business, but how can you, you know, generate extra income? Like some of us, you know, would like to retire early or just be prepared for retirement, period. And I think this is an opportunity to um, really increase your income, like learn how to use these tools and, and increase your income. So that's, that's part of my mission. It. So I liken this to people who may be a little bit older or maybe not. I remember there was a time that people were not on so, on board to using Microsoft products. They didn't want to use Microsoft Word. They didn't want to use Office, PowerPoint. At that time, they had access databases. And so that was another kind of a gold rush for me and my company because there's a time when we were just training people left and right. I was flying all over the United States of America going into companies, training their employees on how to use Microsoft Office. The same thing is going to happen with AI. Well, let me tell you about it. It's already happening. I mean, we've got clients that we're going to be training in 2024. So it's still going to be the same thing. It's that next wave of software that people need to learn. I will tell people this. It's still very early adoption. I know how many views they say they get. I know what they say that their numbers are, but we're still in early adoption. What do I mean by that? Just for as many people that know about it, I can probably guarantee if I did some number crunching, it would be about five that don't. So don't think that it's an already saturated place or any of that information that people want to put out there to, you know, sort of dissuade your opinion or understanding of it. It's still in early, early stages. Um, and even this week when they had their um, DevOps day, I mean, they're in their early stages of just what they're doing for chat GPT which is a part of AI, not the end all to be all of AI. And I think people need to understand there's a little bit of difference between the two. Yes. And so I think, you know, chat GPT is probably what has the most name recognition, like with, you know, the general public. But like you said, um, that's not the only, you know, AI tool. Like I've done quite a bit of talking about Claude AI um, on this broadcast, like over the over the last 12 weeks. Um, and I've shown people Mid Journey, which is the image creation. So there's a few different angles that, you know, people could take in terms of, you know, if they wanted to focus on one specific tool, I definitely think there's opportunity to do that. Or like if you want to focus on copywriting or helping people with their marketing or social media there are so many different angles that you can um you know use to um to make a name or, you know to to make a space for yourself and make a lane for yourself and just operate in that fully i think there's so much opportunity there absolutely i agree absolutely Yep. So I brought up Mid Journey. You getting ready to laugh. So <laughs> let me share my screen and share and show you the first generation I did with Mid Journey. Okay, where's my screen share? Oh, here we go. Can you see that? Do you see my screen? No, they can, but I can't. Oh no, I want you to be able to see. <laughs> I want you to be able to see. Dang it. Unless I'm doing something wrong. No, I can't. Darn it. Well, that's not going to be any fun if you can't see it. Okay. So, hmm, how can I get you to see it? I don't know. 
But y'all, that was my first generation. <laughs> I wonder, can I drop it? How? Wow. How can I? Drop me. Can you drop me a link and I can put it up on my phone? You know what? I don't know. Aren't they, are we live on somebody's platform? Yeah, we're live. Um, We're live on my Facebook. I can send you that link. Let me go there. Let me pull up my phone so I can see. But let's just talk about that. While I'm pulling this up, she's making a point. So she started with one version of it. And now it's a different version of how it looks today in less than a year's time. So that's a lesson for any of us in business. Just as they're involving with their interface and things of that nature, we too, you should be involving in your own business as well. So she does say, I do talk all things business so that I do relate everything to a business. Sorry, I do. Um, so you guys, same thing. You should be evolving too. They didn't just do that first version that happened for her in 2022. They've been evolving ever since. And so we've got to look at how they're evolving and, and continue to do as well. Okay, okay so I, can... I guess I'm live on my personal page and that wasn't the intention, but th this you is are... going to be fine. I meant to do it on my business page. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. So I guess you can see it from there. Um, okay, I'm sharing now. I know it's a couple second delay. I was going to say, you know, a few minutes delay. Let me see. So that's the first one, right? <laughs> Wait a minute, did it show it to me? I think it just brought it up. I don't know how how delayed your stream is. I can see, like, at the bottom, I'm talking about evolving. Has it showed it to me yet? I don't know. But anywho, this is the first, this is my first little baby that I created. So it was four images, actually, because, you know, it creates like four up. So I'll show you the first four generations. So it was that one, then this one. And if you notice, these images are very small. So I don't know if they were 512 by 512 pixels at this time. I'm not sure, because now it generates at 1024. So this was the third little girl. So she was a little off because her hair was doing something interesting. Um, and then this is the last one of that first little group. Do you see them now? Yeah, I can okay. see. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, these were the first four generations, right? So let's go to where we are today. So using basically that same prompt, I cleaned the prompt up a little bit, but basically, you know, the same prompt. And I, th I used the same seed. So I grabbed the seed from this generation and I cleaned up the prompt a little bit. And this is the um, new, one of the new generations from Mid Journey Model uh, 5.2. You can see how much bigger it is. Yeah, it's a lot nicer. It's a lot more detailed. But that's the same prompt. It's using the same seed from, you know, way back from November 7th of last year. And I created this on November 5th of this year. So that just shows you how rapidly, you know, these AI tools are evolving. So I just want to encourage everybody to, like, get in the game now because it's only going to, um, you know, continue to grow. Hey, Keith, good evening. How's it going? Hey, Tawana. Thank you guys for tuning in. So we are talking about how you can build an AI agency um, with the the things that you're learning with AI, because Leticia just mentioned a little bit ago, she was like, for every person that you know, that knows about AI tools or knows how to use AI tools, you know, five that don't, or you feel like there's probably five people that don't. And even like with um, ChatGPT, so we know that there's what, 7 billion people on the planet? Correct. And ChatGPT has 100 million active users, which sounds like a lot. It is, but 100 million out of 7 billion, that's a scratch. On the surface, small, right? Exactly. It's a small and fraction. Users aren't, let's, and we got to look at that. Let's take that into consideration. Even with that, a number of users, there's different levels to that. You know, some of them may be very proficient. Some of them may be moderately, and some may be like I've tried it a couple of times. I go in, but I'm really not sure. So it's still a huge window, a huge gap there for you if you have a business or want to start a business around AI. It's still it's still time. It's still it's so early. It's, it's so very early. early. We're in our infancy. And I feel like 
a lot of people have created accounts and they've gone on there and maybe asked like a basic question or two and they didn't like the response or they didn't feel like it was, you know, very worthwhile. So they kind of gave it up. Oh, you know, this chat GPT not talking about nothing. I would caution you against thinking that because that is not true. <laughs> I just got before I hopped on here with Leticia, I met with, um, you know, a, a potential client and we went through a whole, you know, a couple of whole conversations about how you could use chat GPT. And she was mind blown. She was like, you know, I had played around with it, but I wasn't getting this type of response. So it's really in knowing how to prompt it and talk to it. And that is a skill that you learn and you learn by kind of watching videos or signing up for a course or a class or, you know, a mentorship program or something like that. There are so many different ways that you can learn, you know, prompt engineering or how to talk to the bot or whatever you, it is you want to call it. And you can use that to generate, you know, to turn it into a business. You can learn that skill. And it's not it's not hard. I think it requires some um, practice. But I promise y'all, it's not hard. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say this. If you want to turn anything to a business, it's going to be some work. So it's well worth the work, depending on what type of business and what you want. If you're looking for time freedom, financial freedom, it's worth it. It's worth learning it. It's worth working with it. You know, again, going out there to see what it can do for you. And as and someone... Yes. And as someone that has had a product, like a physical product based business, Stop me. Stop me. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. She did have a physical product based business. I'm going to tell y'all, she is like, I call her a lab scientist, which she does not like, but she can formulate anything. Literally, I call her and say, Hey, I was in a hotel. I got this lotion. It has a smell. I need you to smell it and remake it in your product. And she did. I did, but. Where I was going with and what I wanted you to stop me from saying. <laughs> so having a physical products business can be demanding. It can it can confine you like by location. It can confine you. you know, there's various ways of confinement. But when you use something like when you create like an AI um, based agency and you have digital products or you are consulting that opens up, you know, freedom to move about the cabin <laughs> or freedom to move about the country, freedom to move about the world. Because <laughs> you can, you, I mean, depending on the industry that you're working in, you have the ability to work from anywhere and you can deliver, you know, deliver your deliverables from, from anywhere. I, I like it so much better, like being a digital product-based business versus a physical product. Oh, my goodness. And... You can take digital products and put them on physical products, <laughs> you know, using like sure. point, print on demand or something like that. So it has opened up so many like opportunities or ideas for me that I felt confined when I had a, a physical product based business. So, yeah, I... yeah we have a question from Rakaya. Um, how would you... How would you compare the quality of creating images in ChatGPT versus Midjourney? Rakaya, ma'am, that is a great question. So, Dolly 3 in ChatGPT is fire. I love it. Yeah. So, I was going to say better. You, you like it better? I do like it better. I do like it better, which makes it. So, what's going to happen now? You guys got to realize that ChatGPT does have the ability to create images for those who don't know. Some people still don't know that they can create images in ChatGPT. Um, and so you can do that now. The quality uh, is very, very different. So I, it will be interesting to see what MidJourney does over the next couple of months to come back to the level of where ChatGPT is. But the image quality is really, really good. And that's one yeah, I agree. And that's one thing that you learn, like as you kind of delve off into these AI tools, um, they are built on what's called models. Now, all of these models are trained in different ways. So their outcomes look a little different. But as you play around with them, you'll start to learn like the style of, you know, Dolly 3 or the style of Mid Journey. And I've done um, image, image generation in both of them. 
um, over the last few weeks when I've done the live streams, but I'm really, Dolly, I've probably been on Dolly three for two or three weeks now, maybe like three weeks. And I, I do love it. Um, it. It's it's cool. And I think they have done, so they, they were letting you do like four images at a time. And I think they turned it back to two. Yeah, they, yeah, they turned that back. That's got changed. Yeah, yeah, but and just today, like we were talking about how fast things are changing with AI. Um, Chat GPT released their new interface today. Um, Leticia mentioned earlier they had their developers conference this past Monday, and they um, what's his name Sam Altman, who's the the founder and CEO at um, OpenAI. He did like their keynote presentation and he was going through all the changes that they're making and all the new, you know, tools that they're implementing. And it was like overwhelming in a good way. I was like, Oh my gosh, like the GPTs. So y'all, if y'all have been following the news about the GPTs, baby, the GPTs are here. I already made one today. I am so excited. <laughs> so, yeah, The GPTs are nice. I just played with one before we got on here and I was like, wait a minute. So that's definitely going to be a game changer. Definitely. And so, like, if you don't have a um, paid chat GPT account, I think a great way to kind of get started playing around if you're thinking about doing a business around artificial intelligence would be to get a paid chat GPT account and start playing with those GPTs because they're going to um, open up a uh, marketplace for the GPTs and yep. you'll be able to do revenue sharing. So that's, you know, a way to earn extra money. Like if you come up with an idea that's um, fairly unique, you can, um, you know, put it in the open AI uh, GPT marketplace. And I guess I, I don't really know what the revenue model is going to be yet. But as you uh, people use your GPT, you get part of the revenue that open AI is getting. So that is that I think that's a good look. Yeah, it's just reminding me of when the app stores launch, you know, when you do the apps and we build apps for people, we would talk about some of how that works. Because when you do have an app and you have an app where people do in-app um, purchases, you're sharing part of that revenue with Apple and Google. So it's going to be probably very similar. I can't imagine that it would be any different than um, any different than how they operate today. So, yeah, it'll probably be something along that lines. So if it's a free one versus a paid one, and then what's the cost of the paid one? I know Apple, you know, when people purchase from apps, they get a portion of every purchase. Yep. Yep. So Rakaya has a great question. She's asking what is a, what are GPTs? So GPTs are basically little applications that you can build um, that are trained for a specific purpose. Like I can share um, I can share the one that I created today. So um, it's not available to the public, but I will share it here. Um, just to kind of show you what I did. So as Leticia mentioned, and I think I've mentioned, you know, on the broadcast several times, I am a um, clinical lab scientist by trade. And so that's that's what I went to college for. Um, I've been operating in this space since 1996, I think. <laughs> I started out in the lab as a phlebotomist. Um, and I worked my way I worked as a phlebotomist. I worked my way through school to become a clinical lab scientist. And so that's what I've been doing for several years. So I created a GPT. And hey, Taiwan is a, a, a clinical lab scientist as well. So oh. I created a GPT to, um, she said, whoop, whoop. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so um, I created a GPT about, um, lab test insight so you know we go all go to the doctor and it's routine if you go to the doctor once a year to get your um you know lab work to get blood work like if you're feeling sick they may draw blood do cultures that type of thing they might swab your throat or you know something like that if you cut yourself you may have gone to the doctor and got swabbed if if you know a wound or something got infected so you can ask this gpt about your lab results or you know about lab tests so for example say um 
you aren't feeling so well and you've been feeling, you know, kind of you crappy for a few months and you go to the doctor and you complain and, you know, about how you've been feeling and the doctor is thinking possibly you have like an autoimmune disorder or something like that. They may order a test called the ANA, which is I think it's anti-nucleic acid, if I'm not mistaken. So you can come to this GPT and say, what is an ANA? My doctor ordered that test on me. So let's see what the GPT says. So ANA stands for anti-nuclear antibody test. Here we go with the chat GPT shenanigans. <laughs> Network here. Um, it's a blood test to detect anti-nuclear antibodies in the blood. If the immune system is healthy, it normally produces antibodies. And it goes on to explain, you know, what this test is about. Um, let me see. Why is it generating errors? Oh, no. Right in the middle of my demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> That's Welcome no to fun. the <laughs> I know, right? So, um... Like this just went live today and I just built this today. So chat GPT has been having like sporadic outages today because they're turning on this new interface. So um, we're showing this to you guys very new. So <laughs> sorry about the technology. I can't do a full demonstration, but that's basically what this GPT does is you can ask it questions about your lab tests um, or your cultures and it will, um, and it will, uh, give you information so it tells you you know i'm a lab test consultant for blood tests and microbiology cultures and it asks how it can help and so this is built um using the um the browsing capability i don't think i have the and that's it i didn't turn on the dolly 3 or the um data analysis because i don't want people asking you know, like chat GPT, like what a red cell looks like, and it doesn't give them an anatomically, anatomically correct cell. I was like, let me stay away from that. But this is just an example of how you can, you know, simply build a tool like this literally took me not even 15 minutes to build this for a specific use case. So you can do you can build your own GPT to do whatever you know, however you're inclined, whatever you want to do, you can build a bot for yourself. Like if you have your own knowledge base or something like that, you can build a bot, you know, for yourself. Like Leticia can build a Leticia bot or, you know, a mobile sophisticated bot or, you know, something like that. I'm out too, by the way. Oh, do you? Yeah, we're not using this one. We're using some AI stuff, but we are building sort of a little like, you know, an Ask Leticia bot. You ask it a question, it's going to respond how answers, you know. It's gonna, like it's I gonna give it to him straight. <laughs> straight, no chaser, no chaser needed. So, um, please tell us more about the mobile sophisticate because you have um, something coming up very soon. <laughs> yes, I do. So, the mobile sophisticate is one of the companies that I own. I actually own several, but it's my latest company that I started in. Um, actually, I started in 2017. It was an app development company. It was my brand, my app. And then in 2019, I renamed it to the Mobile Sophisticate. So I've been working in tech for all these years. I've been working for any of the Fortune. I probably worked for a good portion of the Fortune 50, to be honest with you. And so I realized that the same solutions that I was building and implementing for them, I could start to do that for entrepreneurs and small-based businesses. So I started a different company that focuses on that called the Mobile Sophisticate. So we basically do anything from building uh, websites, software platforms, um, data platforms. We do uh, funnels, landing pages, CRMs, automations, things of that nature. And so, so within that company for the past couple of years, people have been asking me to do trainings and speaking and all this other stuff. And I would always say no. And then one day I was like, you know what? I want to do my own thing. And so my own thing turned into this thing called Tech to tech to profit for the non-techie yeah you heard it non-techie so the things that i do is i bring my my um my superpower friends on and we talk about different things that you should be implementing in your business at this point in time i will say this, this is the best time 
ever in the past five years is to be an entrepreneur in the United States of America because so many things are available and economical for you to run your business and build the business that you dream of. And so Tech to Profit for the non-techie pretty much does that. So we do a couple of summits this year. I had my first in person this year here in Richmond, Virginia. I'll probably have another one in 2025. But each one is themed around something in your business that you should be doing. Um, so we started off uh, early this year with Black Friday planning. We told you all the things you should be doing for Black Friday planning. I kind of gave you a little project plan that you should follow. Now, you should be in the middle of <laughs> launching your Black Friday. If you are a small business, we cannot wait to Black Friday to launch. Launch now. Launch now. Black Friday is going to have so much friction going on. You need to launch now. If you got an email list, launch now. And so the next thing we're going to start talking about, which we'll talk about this Friday and Saturday from 9 to 2 online, will be 2024 planning. A lot of the times my solopreneurs and the businesses with a team of five or less, you guys don't do any planning. And then 2024 gets here and you're back in that same rut or trying to rush. So we're going to talk about things that you should be implementing in 2024 and how you can plan for 2024. And so it's a free summit. 9 to 2 this Friday and Saturday on the Zoom. We're going to talk about podcasting. We're going to have one of my coach friends come on and coach you guys through some things about planning around your business. I'm going to always give something called a state of the tech. I love to do this. And I pretty much talk about technology for your business. And the biggest thing that I talk about when I'm dealing with technology is not necessarily the implementation of it, but what you need it and why you need it and how it's going to help you. And a lot of time that's around Legion. I do a lot in the Legion space. A lot of you guys have referral based businesses. And then when your referrals dry up, then you're struggling to maintain your business. And that's why we talk about a lot of Legion. And then we're going to have another person um, talk about funding. That's another thing. I see a lot of people talking about funding. So we're going to have my good friend Sharice Wilkes is going to come on and she's going to talk about funding. What do you need to know about funding? What do you need to have in your business if you want to seek funding? Where's the proper places to go about funding? What's the difference between funding that you pay back and grants? And so she'll talk about that on Saturday. And then Meredith is going to come back to the stage for us because last time everybody loved exactly what Meredith talked about. She's going to come back and she's going to go back into the AI space. I'm not sure what nugget she's dropping this time. They didn't give me that. Um, but anyway... She's going to come back and drop new nuggets. Now, what's nice about these things is normally Meredith and the other speakers, they take a real situation of somebody on the Zoom. So I think last time she took our event plan, a Connie, and she did a whole AI plan for her. So you don't want to miss it. It's free. It's 9 to 2. Very interactive, very um, energetic and upbeat. But yeah, and I think she dropped the link there. You can go in. You still time to register and join us on Zoom for two days and get ready. Bring your notebooks, bring your, you know, your open mind, but get ready to plan for 2024. Okay, so I'm trying to drop it on Facebook and Facebook is playing in my face right now um, because it won't let me drop the link. But I was able to successfully drop it to YouTube, but it's Tech to Profit Summit. So I'm going to, um, it's Tech to Profit summit.com and i'm gonna switch off i'm gonna share i'm gonna show like the screen really quick this is the registration page so you just click this button right here register for the free summit and you can scroll down the landing page and see um some of the information who the speakers are who is the host there's another speaker on here, too. I thought I saw her earlier. Paulette is going to come talk to you guys. Sis, and let me tell you all something. Yeah, Dr. Paulette Clark. Yes. Now, most of you guys, y'all don't want to do Facebook advertising. There are other ways to advertise. You can have a podcast. You can be on podcasts. You can advertise on podcasts. So you need to be in there because she's going to start talking about ways you can advertise that don't involve Facebook ads and it how it allows you to lead in to get clients yes so Paulette is a great resource yes. um trying to mute this i'm gonna go in and share the link so that my facebook peeps can get it thank you because for whatever reason it wasn't sharing on my phone okay guys so i just dropped it in the chat here so you guys should be able to pick it up um okay so hopefully you can join tomorrow and saturday 
So what questions do you guys have about um, starting like an AI agency or like what questions that maybe you didn't get a chance to ask over the last 12 weeks? Do you guys have about ChatGPT or MidJourney? Um, do you have any reservations, any fears that we could try to allay? Because I, I really want you guys to get on this gold rush. I promise it's like the third of, of my little lifetime as a Gen Xer. And I do not intend to miss out. And I'm the type of person I want to bring people along with me because I see it as the path to freedom. So I want to bring you guys along with me. So ask your questions. <laughs> and I have been consistently like meeting with people and consulting with people like pay consultations with people every week on using these AI tools. And, you know, just looking at opportunities to go work with businesses, um, schools, organizations on how they can implement um, AI into their processes and workflows. Um, and I'm just I'm excited. I want to learn it on the front end because a lot of organizations are still unsure how to implement AI. But when you really learn these tools and understand how they're built, you can build like private um, artificial intelligence tools that are housed, you know, on servers. And that's kind of getting into your whole techie talk or whatever. <laughs> a yeah. little bit beyond me. We're mm -hmm. there. Though. We're there. We're already building some things that are private. We we have two clients that have what's called an enterprise, um, the open AI enterprise. And so their stuff is not going to be a part of the learning. You know, you won't get access to it. They're being using it. They've got this there. So, yeah, absolutely. You can have it on your own server. You don't have to use a chat GPT portion of it with your business. Um, so there are levels there. But again, there are still levels of small businesses that in your expertise, you could help. So if you were a marketing person, if you are a photographer, if you, I don't know, all the people are on here, you know, Tawana is in a lab scientist. There's still ways you can use AI to help even the local doctor's office or your local pharmacy, you know, non-chain things. It's just a matter of um, taking your expertise and marrying it with the AI and then finding that audience. And there's an audience for everything. I tell people that I believe in abundance and there's an audience for every single business out here. Yep. Perfect. So I want to um, I want to address Rakaya has a question and I'm gonna let you think about it uh, really quick. Um, can you see Rakaya's, Rakaya's question? Um, uh, what would you say the first three steps of starting an AI agency are? So I'm going to put that on the screen and I'm going to let you think about that for a second. And then I want to go back to um, chat GPT because, mm -hmm. but you can't see my screen. Dang nabbit. Um, because the, um, the bot is working now. My, uh, my lab, my lab test insights bot is working. And so it gave us the full answer. So what the bot is programmed to do is to tell you a little bit about the lab test that you asked it about. It gives you, you know, like typical normal ranges, excuse me, things like that. And it also will give you a relevant question to ask your doctor or your healthcare provider about this test. So you can just kind of see here, it tells you in the first paragraph what ANA stands for, which is the anti-nuclear antibody test. Um, it tells you about how it takes a small sample of your blood to, you know, ana um, analyze for this particular marker. Uh, the results are typically reported as a ratio, um, indicating the highest dilution in your blood. Um, the higher ratio can suggest the greater likelihood that you have an autoimmune disease, but it doesn't necessarily correlate to the severity. Um, and then it talks about like the pattern of the ANA, which um, your doctor can go into more detail, like about if there's like a specific type of autoimmune that is related to that particular pattern. Um, and they probably would do further testing. Can you see that on the screen? I mean, I can see what you read. I can hear what you read. I'm sorry. I can hear what you're reading. So this reminds me of when WebMD came out, long story short, I, my eye was bothering me. And I went to WebMD. I was on the road traveling. And it was like, your eye is going to fall out of the socket. <laughs> First of all, I met it gave you all that. But that's a little scary. I did admit it. I'm scary spice. That's just a bit scary. But I'm glad it was able to do that. Because a lot of times, like when we get our test results back, it's a test name that's some initials, a score. And then you're supposed to be below or above and nobody really explains to you what it really means. So that is absolutely amazing. 
And so then it ends like it, it whatever it gives you, it ends it with a question that you can ask your doctor. So based on your ANA results, you might want to ask your healthcare provider, what do my ANA results suggest about my current health and how do they inform our next steps? So that's the perfect question. So one of my goals, um, and this was before I met you, I um, used to have a blog. It, was, it, it had a terrible name. I didn't know about branding at the time. I was doing the best as I could. But it was called the Empowered Mocha Patient because I'm super passionate about making sure that black people participate in their health care and not just go to the doctor and listen to what they say and not ask questions and maybe not get a good understanding and either don't follow what's been prescribed or don't ask the doctor how they can tweak it to their lifestyle or even just engage. They kind of like go and will let the doctor talk at them and then they may implement, they may not. So I wanted to, my goal was to empower people to ask questions, to be an active participant in their health care. And I'm still a huge advocate of people, you know, asking questions and making sure that they get an understanding. And I do it on both sides. I teach patients how to ask doctors questions. And I also have actually, um, taught a workshop at Stanford uh, University out in California. Um, they had a program there called um, Stanford Medicine X, and I uh, taught a workshop at one of their conferences one year about how to, um, how so how physicians can have conversations with their patients to make sure that they understand, like, what has taken place during their visit, like, to make sure that they understand, like, if they've been given, like, a diagnosis or been prescribed a new medication or just, you know, what their understanding was of the visit. It's called, like, the teach back method. So right, where the right. patient will um, basically... Um, let the provider know that they understood like the, the interaction that day and got their questions answered and whatnot. So that's something I'm super passionate about personally. So I always want people to have an idea of the type of question that they could ask their doctor or healthcare provider, you know, when, when they have tests or even just regular annual checkup doctor visits and nothing is wrong. Like you want to just let the doctor know how you're feeling and, and the questions you have and not be afraid. So Gotcha. Yeah. And that's a lot, though. A lot of doctors don't have great bedside manners. I mean, we know that, you know, black people are, are you know, di uh, not diagnosed properly at a, at a definitely high portion or high rate. So that is definitely um, definitely probably needed today still. To be yep. with so let's circle back to Rakaya's question. If you've had some time to think about it, uh, what what are the first three steps in starting an AI agency? Well, here's what I will say. If you already are, I'll give it two sides of the house. If you already have a business, go ahead and look at the ways that you can impart AI into that business that you have today. So in the, in the case of um, Rakaya, who is a photographer, she could look at ways that she can go ahead and bring AI into the current business that she has. I know we've talked to her about doing some content, things of that nature. So look to see where they are. If you're not sure, why not just go to chat gpt and ask and tell them who you are what you do and how what suggestions they make for you that you can add ai to your actual agency a little bit easier probably for me because i'm tech so i know exactly for me it's more about education and then how they can use it at the same time when you're in chat gpt once they give you those suggestions try to see if you can also generate some use cases meaning again giving you a better idea of what you can do AI based in your business today. And that's part of being an AI agency. Most of us probably already have a business. Most of us probably already have an agency. We just don't realize we have an agency because we don't look at it the same way. And trust me, it took me some years to look at it that I'll have an agency as well So that. Once you get that filled out, go ahead and figure out what your offer is, but nothing's changed from basic business foundation. What's the offer and who's the audience? And be very clear about it. Most of us don't niche down in their bit on our business. So even when this AI agency, you want to niche down and be clear about who you serve and how you're going to serve them. Um, I hope that answered her question. Now, if you do not own a business, if you are thinking about AI and not sure I would say definitely go ahead and pay the $20 a month. Y'all drink more coffee and Starbucks and shopping. That little $20 <laughs> is not going to hurt you. You're not even going to feel it. And then when you start a business anyway, it's going to become a business expense. But go ahead and get in there. Maybe find some classes or take some of Meredith's classes to see what it's all about learning how to do prompts, whether you want to be in mid-journey, whether you want to use the Dali plugin, or you want to be in ChatGPT or Jasper or Claude. Go ahead and experiment with that. If you've been thinking about a business idea, whatever that may be, then again, once you're inside of ChatGPT, you can ask it, what does it suggest based on what your thoughts are 
on that part of the business. Once you have that idea, then you've got to now go into understanding what is a business, how do I start it, and what do I do? If you can't afford a coach, I will tell people most cities and most states have a free resource called do 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 SBDCA. Probably got that wrong. Small Business Development Center. Yep, got it right. In the go, SBA too, you can get a mentor with the SBA. And as well as SCORE. You mm -hmm. can go to any of those. Once you've got some of this stuff written down or you know kind of figured out, you can go to them and they can help you as well to get some of that foundational business stuff. If you can't afford a coach and you're not sure where to find a coach, um, that's definitely a way that you can do it. But most of us who already have an agency, it's just a matter of seeing how does AI come into it, the agency. Um, they have answered your question, Rakaya. Awesome. Thank you, Leticia. So um, Tawana said, that's dope. I need to use AI more um, to get my processes documented and streamlined for my training and coaching business. I need to maximize my time better since I still work full time. Yeah, let's... Um, Let's let's talk to Wana because I um I have some ideas for you. You can definitely use ChatGPT to help you with that. Like you can go through like a whole iterative process to it'll it'll write your policies and procedures for you. Yep. It's a matter of you know the questions that you ask it. You can start with outline all the way through you know creating creating the documentation for the policy itself. Yep. And then you just, you know, massage it to be specific to you if it doesn't give you everything. Yep. And Rakaya said that, yes, your answer was helpful. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, Tech to Profit Summit starting tomorrow. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited about some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Some of the people that's going to be on there. Um, I am excited. I'm always excited about it whenever we actually uh, do this. There's a lot going leading up to it. So I'm definitely excited to uh, talk about this 2024 plan and things that I see on the horizon as far as tech and businesses. And, you know, even AI is one lane of it, but there's some other things that are changing and that we need to kind of embrace and be ahead of the curve. So I'm pretty excited. And I'm going to. I'm going to be focusing mostly on chat GPT and how you can use that to help you with your planning and, and implementing, like to implement the things that you planned for the year. So, ah, so she just dropped what she's doing. You might want to be there. Normally she's live and normally we are physically inside of chat GPT for the people who can follow along. So, yeah, I, um, I am on stage. I am on the virtual stage Saturday at 10 15, I think. Yeah, my, my I'm time to, to speak. Yeah, so we're nine to two. It's yeah, not even all day. We actually break at about one thirty, two o'clock each day. We used to do nine to five. It's pretty long, so we kind of go nine to two. Okay. Yeah, I, have I been at? I think I've been at all of the conferences because I was at the live event in Richmond for a mm -hmm. portion of it. Yeah, you haven't missed one yet. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, so if there, let me see. Oh, Keith's going to be there. Great. Can't wait to see you, Keith. I think so, Keith has been with us a couple of times as well. Yeah. Yep. He was at the last one. So, um, yeah. Do you guys have any more questions before we close out? This was great. I thank you, um, for being here and sharing your knowledge because, I know that you're a wealth of knowledge and I just, I feel like I need to share that with, with others. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm just excited for you. 12 weeks is hard to do, but you've done 12 weeks of this and I'm sure you've given them great nuggets over the 12 weeks. And I'm coming back in the new year. I think we're going to, um, it's probably going to be a couple of live classes before the end of the year, but we're definitely coming back in the new year with the live streams for season two. So I'm excited and looking forward to that. But in the meantime, um, be sure, you know, to drop your questions. You can inbox me. Um, happy to answer your questions. I'm going to be continuing to create content and I'm going to be dropping videos on my YouTube channel as well, like some tutorials and stuff. So be sure to um, check me out on YouTube. And if you have any specific questions that I am able to answer, um, please do let me know. Or if you're interested in a, um, a consultation that is available too, and I can send you the link to that. So I guess we will close out. 
secret to them. We can't. I can't leak your secret. What's my secret? We got. A, you got a Facebook group. I can't leak that. Yes. Well, you leaked it now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the reminder <laughs> don't drop it there i mean definitely she has a facebook group so you should maybe drop your questions in her facebook group as well yes the facebook group is called easy ai prompts so let me um let me share the link to the facebook group i had to do that thank you you keeping me on task i appreciate it you got the link i don't have it Yep, I have it here. So you guys are welcome to our group. Yes. Ask your questions. Wait, I don't think I put that in the right place. <laughs> I put it in the group. I need to put it under the live. Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay. So be sure to join our Facebook group. It's called Easy AI Prompts and ask your questions there. Um, share if you want to share prompts or you want to share the art that you created with the prompts that I share or anything like that. You're more than welcome. Feel free. Um, I'm trying to build a community. And my goal, I don't think that I've, um, you know, shared this enough, but my goal is really to work with um gen xers and get us you know into this ai game like upskilling and getting people you know using ai that's really my goal i want to help um as many um gen xers as i can to learn these ai tools so um please <laughs> please join me get on this program do not get left behind um yeah that's that's really all i can say please don't get left behind Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, Leticia. We are going to um, close out. It is the top of the hour, and I know that you have a busy week ahead of you. So I want, or a weekend, and I want to be respectful of your time. But thank you for coming on and helping me close out um, season one of Dive into AI with Meredith. Yay! I did it. A whole twelve weeks. <laughs> yes. Oh, I should have had my sound effects turned on. Oh well, I'll do it next time. <laughs> <laughs> my little siren burr, 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 burr. <laughs> but all right i am going to close out and i will see you guys um in the next season all right